Anybody remember what we did last uh, class? We started going over uh, AR, AR uh, programs. And, okay, uh, so, about so lags. absolutely. So last time I said uh, for AR1, I was going to prove the properties of AR1, correct? And what was the first property I proved last, last class? Look at your notes. What did we determine last class? The mean, exactly, thank you. So last class, I showed you that the mean was equal to, I showed you the equation, the mean is equal to the constant divided by one minus the coefficient of the lag variable. Remember that, please take a look at your note. I, I gave you the note last class. If you look at it, you will see what, what we arrived at, okay? Now today, what are we going to do? We're going to show the variance today. And the variance, I, I posted two pages on Blackboard. So please go to Blackboard and pick up the two pages if you haven't done so now. And let me show you what we are going to prove tonight. Uh, let's see. Okay, look, everyone, can you see this page now? Can you see this page? Yes. Okay, now, so here, from last class, you should know that the mean is zero. And we discussed that last class that the mean of the AR1 series is zero. Can, does anybody remember why this is zero? Zero because and not, there is no coefficient um, uh, phi zero. Because there's no constant, right? Constant, yeah. Okay, so the constant is zero. So this is zero. If the constant were not zero, then the mean would be that constant divided by one minus what from this equation? Zero over one minus 0 0.9. Exactly, okay. So, so, so this is zero because the equation is zero divided by one minus 0 0.9. So that's what we proved last class. Today, what I'm going to show you is this equation for the variance, okay? This, so this is where we are going today. All right, everybody see this? We're going to see the variance equation. We're going to prove this. And in, in trying to prove this, I am going to introduce, I'm going to introduce, introduce a new notation to you. Something you have never seen before, many of you, because you haven't studied econometric before, but it is a very shorthand way. It's a very, you know, like, you remember if I want to say the sum of all the X's, if I have X1, X2, X3, and up to x10, and I want to say the sum of them, what do I do? I use sigma, right? I use this, the, the notation sigma. So the notation sigma x of i is just a simple, um, is just a shorthand way of saying, saying the sum of x1 plus x2, x plus x3 up to x10. I just say sigma xi from i equals one to 10. So tonight I'm going to introduce a very convenient, uh, um, notation that we use. So in order to prove this, in order to prove this, I, I'm going to introduce you to a, a, a notation that many of you will be looking at for the first time. Now your textbook doesn't use that, but your textbook is a little advanced in this area because it just proves it in two steps. But to make it simple for you, I'm going to break it down thoroughly, okay? So, okay, so what we're going to do, so we already proved the mean of an AR1 series. So tonight we're going to prove the mean, the variance of an AR1 series. And don't forget the variance is truly the covariance at like zero. Everybody remembers that, right? So the variance is actually the covariance, the auto covariance at like zero, okay? So remember that because from next week, I'll begin now to do the auto covariance and auto correlation at different lags. Professor, can you please expand more on that last statement? Uh, say that again. Oh, you can mean you, on, the, on the covariance? Yeah, like zero, the variance okay. is, oh, the variance at, at lag zero is co, is the covariance. Yeah. Is no, that the, what, okay. No, the covariance at lag, you remember we have covariance and auto, we have auto covariance and auto correlation at lag yes. zero, lag one, lag two, lag three, lag four, remember that? Yes. So, but I'm not talking about auto correlation now. I'm talking about auto covariance, yes? Yes. Because remember, we have to do auto covariance first, and then arrive at auto correlation, and then and then and then plot the auto correlation function. Yes, 
at like zero, like one, like two, like three, and like covariance, yes. the auto covariance at like zero is the variance. Okay, and you will see that tonight. Okay, got it. And then we're going to arrive at this equation. So let me quickly run through it and stop me. You don't have to stop me. I will tell you exactly where I think the, the tough, um, I'll tell you exactly where I think uh, you, you encounter something new. Okay, everybody should have this already in, in, in Blackboard. So pull it out while I, um, okay. Because I'm trying to make this very simple for us. I would do, I would take some, I would take some liberties, okay? I'm, I will make some assumptions that are very simplifying. All right. You guys can see my, my notes. Okay, so this is my, this is the AR1, correct? No, we don't see your notes, Professor. Oh, you don't see my notes, okay, good. Let me, thank you for telling me that. Uh, let's see, let me make this smaller. Okay, let's see. Let me close this. Uh, no, I don't want to close. Sorry, I'm having some, okay, I minimize. And then I remove this, I minimize this. Okay, now, all right, here goes now, I'm coming with this. This is, uh, uh, this is the second page. Let me bring the first page. So you should have, I posted two pages for you guys today. Let's see, I think I lost the first page. All right, hold on, I have to go get it, okay? Hold on everybody. I have to go get number one. Okay, I stop sharing and I go back. Uh, all right, so, so here we go. Sorry about that. I kind of lost, I, I, I removed this as accidentally. All right, so can you see this now, everybody? Can you see my handwritten yes. note, everybody? Okay, yeah. okay, good. So, so this, thank you. So this first line is the, is the AR1 model, okay? Can somebody quickly tell us why is this AR1? It's the first lag. It's the first lag because of this item, right? Well, it's just because it has one lag. It doesn't yes, necessarily because... have to be the first lag. Uh, huh. Okay. It kind of make mean the same thing depending on how. Yes, yes. But again, because this, this has only one lag, right? Right? Right. Okay, so it's an AR1. Right. If, if it's an AR2 model, I'll have, I'll have this mu plus uh, phi1 xt minus one plus phi2 xt minus two plus the error. Then it would be an AR2 model. You get that? Do you get that? I'll have another term here. Okay, let me type this. Let me put this on chat, okay? So you can see this. Uh, so it will be x, x of t equals uh, some constant plus uh, like, uh, let's say, Let's say a sub zero plus a sub one uh, x sub uh, t t minus one plus a sub two times 
x t minus 2 plus e. All right. So it will be, if it were an uh, AR2, it would be x sub t equals a sub zero, that a constant plus a one, I can't write subscript here, a sub one, that's uh, the coefficient times x t minus one plus a sub two times x t minus two plus error term, okay? So this is an AR2 model, you got that? It has one lag here and two lags here. Got it. Okay. If it's an A, if it's an AR3, I'll simply add another term here with x t minus three. So that's an so that's an AR3 model. But for this for this uh, for this uh, situation, we are, we are stopping with x t minus one. So that's that's what makes it an AR1 model. All right. Okay. So guys, so this is what I used last class, right? But because when we have when we approve when we when we want to derive the variance and the autocorrelation, as you will see, it's it will get so complicated if we if I do not make an assumption. So look, guys, if you are looking at this, look at this. What I'm doing here, right? I am putting the constant equal to zero. So this constant. I want to remove it. I don't have to remove it, but if I do not remove it, then instead of this being only two pages, it would be like four pages. It just gets more complicated. Okay. So when we want to prove, when we want to prove this, um, these things, we don't, we don't include it. Because, and I would ex explain why it will disappear at the end. Okay. Okay. But just to, just to uh, reduce the complexity of the notation, I am making this, this thing here. I'm making, oh my God, sorry. Uh, what did I just do? Sorry, I, I, I lost it. Just, just to remove the complexity, I, uh oh, what did I just do? Sorry, I lost my, <laughs> but everybody has this, right? Just give me a second. Um, I lost my page. Okay, so let me get it again. Sorry. Uh, AR1. All right, so now I'm going back. Okay, sorry about that, my hands are dry. Okay, look, so if you look at, if you compare these two lines, please compare these two lines. What is the difference between these two lines? I put the mean equal to zero for convenience. But if, even if I retain it, the derivation will be very complicated, but that at the end, the variance of a, what is the variance of a constant term? Anyone? Zero. The variance of a constant term is zero. So it will still disappear. But, to, but by carrying it all through, then is the, the, the derivation is going to be a little bit more complicated, okay? All right. Okay, so let me move quickly because I need to explain uh, this. Now, okay, so look at it by definition. Everybody remembers the definition of variance from your basic statistics. Variance is the expected value of the X, the return minus the mean, right? Remember that? Squared. Yes. So instead of writing is equal to the expectation of this, the return minus the mean squared, instead of putting the squared here, I just simply repeated it here. You see? So the variance is expected value of return of a t minus the mean at t and the return at t minus the mean at t. So I just repeated it. But from statistics, remember the variance is equal to the return minus the mean squared expected of square. So instead of writing square, I just repeated it here. Okay. Everybody see that, right? Yes. Yep. No. Okay. All right. Now I want to do something and I, I want you, I want you to be able to say, if you understand why I did this, what is the expected value of XT? 
if the if the the constant is zero, then isn't it zero? Okay. If the constant is zero, it is zero. We showed that last class, and I, we do, we just discussed it about five minutes ago, because what is underlying all of this is the concept of stationarity. I will explain that uh, at the end of the proof, okay, or whenever we finish uh, with this all these exercises. So if if the average is zero, then this average is zero and this average is zero, okay? So look here, I said, because this is zero and I ask you why, okay? Why is this so? Because we are making this constant equal to zero. And those of you could I remember the proof we did last class, if we make this constant zero, then this will disappear. That is why for convenience, I'm saying I want to go from this first line to this first line. Because if I, if I didn't make it zero, then I have to carry through all of this. And believe me, you don't want to see that because instead of two pages, it will be four or five pages of proof, okay? All right. Now, this is, everybody please pay attention uh, here because this is, this is where I'm going to introduce a new notation to you, everybody, okay? Uh, see here, it says a little digression. I want to introduce something called the lag operator or backshift operator, okay? Now, look at this. And, and that is called, uh, in some books, I know many of you, you, some of you read different books, I know that. In some books, it's, it's called L. In other books, it's called B, as in boy, okay? As in beverage, B. When you, when you see it used as L, that is called the lag operator. And when you see it as uh, B, that is called the backshift operator. It's the same thing. All we are doing is we want, to, we want to introduce a very convenient notation. Because look, instead of me writing, every time I write x to the, part, uh, to the subscript t, uh, t minus one, all I will write is, I write L of x, okay? So let me, let me type this on, let me share this with you. Let me put it on chat, okay? And, and so, so L, so L of, uh, I'm sorry. So L X of T is equal to X of T minus one. Okay, so let me, so please look at your chart. I just sent you a chart. So using the, Putting that L in front of X, meaning I am lagging X one time period at the back, okay? So instead of writing XT minus one, I simply write L of XT. Once you see that one L, it means lag XT by one. If I write L squared, L squared X of T, what does that mean? It's x t minus two. If I write l of uh, l cube x t, it means x of t to minus three. Okay, that is a very convenient notation in this area that we use when we do proofs. Okay, so here look look at look at this equation. Okay, so x of t x of t equal this equation, that is the, the, the uh, AR1. So look what I'm doing. So I, 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 I want to leave only the error on the right-hand side, okay? So I say this is x of t minus all this term because I want to leave the error on the right-hand side. By the way, what do we call this error, this u? What do we call it? Isn't it? White noise is a white noise. Okay, so I have it up here. Is a white noise? Is a zero mean white noise? Homoscedastic white noise. So the variance of the of of that white noise is constant. We discussed that last time, and the average is zero. And again, the average, Danny, the average is zero for convenience. I know you asked me this question. So so it's no, it's not that we are changing the definition of white noise. White noise has a constant mean. It doesn't have to be zero, right? But 
for, for these proofs, we are making, we are using zero mean white noise for convenience because the notation would get crazy. All right, so I need somebody to look at this equation and tell me you understand this equation, right? This equation. Yeah. Okay, so what did I do? It comes from here. I just moved this to the left. So I'm left with this. Okay, so now, so this xt is equal, so this would be xt minus phi one L of xt. Because remember, xt minus one is L of xt. So look, so I have just, I have substituted everything. Out. Everybody look carefully at this equation and tell me if you understand what's going on. So if you multiply xt by one, that's xt, that's this one, okay? Okay, so if you are sitting at your desk, you might want to write this out yourself. If you multiply xt by phi one L, it will be phi one L of xt. But what is L of xt? L of xt is xt minus one. Do you understand this notation now? Yes. Okay. So using that L is just a way, instead of me writing xt minus one, xt minus two, x three minus three, um, x3 minus four, I can just say uh, L x, L squared x, L cube x, L, L to the power four x, T. So I'm just using L to different powers, okay? So L meaning, L, L of x T meaning, just take x T and lag it one period. L squared of x T would be take x T, lag it, two periods, all right. So look at this equation here, right? Um, so, this tell, so this equation is exact, I'm sorry, I skipped one step. When I, I should have written xt minus phi one lx of t. So if you want to write that on the side. So from here, I should have another equation before here, it should be x of t minus phi one l x of t, because x of t minus one is l x of t, okay? So please write that, I skipped that because I was kind of running out of space. All right, so, so if, if you do that, then you can factor x of t out. If you factor x of t out, then, then it will be x of t into one minus phi one times l. Can I ask everybody to do me a favor, please, right now? Please take your pen or pencil or, and write, write on a piece of, of paper right now. Just ex, let's remove the parentheses here, okay? Everybody, please, I need you to do this so that you can follow me a little bit easier. So right here, x of t times one is x of t, all right? And then right here, minus phi one L, and then when you bring this x of t to be phi one L x of t equals u of t. If you write that, then you will see that is the step I missed here. After here, I should have written that before writing this. Do you understand that? Did anybody do that? Yes. Okay, so if you did that, then you can go back and factor it out again. So this would be x of t into one minus phi one L equals u, okay. This is a very convenient and popular way of representing AR1 models and autoregressive models. So what have I done now? I have, ex I, have, I have restated this equation, this one up here, in terms of the, of the white noise error term. So what I have done is this, is ex this equation is exactly equal to this equation exactly equal to this equation. The only difference is I introduced the L, the lag operator, because it is very convenient for us, okay? All right. Now, I said this we saw in class. Last class, I had mentioned something about calculus before I arrived at the last, very last equation, last class, when I talked about the mean, okay? The same type of idea, okay, is, is uh, on Tuesday, I called it an infinite series, if you remember. If you look at the notes from last class, 
the second to last line, I said, you know, let us use the concept of an infinite series from calculus. I don't know if you remember that, but I did say that. The same infinite series from calculus, we're going to use the same idea now, okay? Or a similar idea. Now, from this equation, from this equation up here, if you're looking at this equation here, if I want to leave only xt on the left-hand side, then this equation will read xt equals u divided by one minus phi one L. You got that? Yeah. But uh, u divided by one minus phi one L is the same thing as one minus phi one L to the power negative one times ut. You agree with me this from calculus? Yes. yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, so what I just did from this equation is I just, I want to put x on the left-hand side, x of t, and move this to the right-hand side. So I divide it here and that's the same thing here. Now, I don't expect anyone in this class to remember this because this comes from calculus, okay? Going from this step to this step, <laughs> you, you saw it in calculus, but I don't expect anyone to remember it, okay? So look, I bring down this x of t, I bring down this u sub t, but this whole, this thing, one minus phi one L to the power of one, we can expand that. In calculus, you study something called the binomial uh, expansion. Using the same idea, binomial expansion is uh, uh, x plus y to the power of two is equal to x squared plus y squared plus two x y. But when you have not two, but you have negative power from calculus, you don't remember. So you don't need to remember because I'm giving it to you. So this thing here, you can expand it to this at the bottom here. It's an infinite series. It, it doesn't end. It just keeps going. So this thing here is the same as one plus phi one L plus phi one squared L squared plus phi one to the power three L to the power three and so on and so forth. It never ends. The next term is plus phi one to the power four L to the power four. So everything times the error term, okay? So this is, again, don't freak out on me, please. I don't expect you to remember it. I'm just reminding you what we studied in calculus, okay? So, so now, if, if, you, if you accept this from me as correct, coming from calculus, then we can go back and, exp and remove the parentheses, okay? So x of t, so now I take this u and I multiply out here. So this is u sub t plus phi one L u sub t plus phi one squared L squared uh, phi, uh, u of t and so on and so forth. But again, remember, what is L U of T? It's U T minus one. Remember that? It's a lag operator, yes? Yes. What is L squared U of T? It's T is U lag twice to the, you know, lag two. What is L cube U of T? It's U T minus three. So anything, if it's Y of T and you put L before it, L Y of T, is equal to y t minus one. If it's l to the five y of t, that is equal to y of t minus five. Do you get this notation? I know for many of you, it's a new notation. You never saw it in calculus, but it is very popular in statistics and econometrics. It helps us to prove things in a very neat way. Okay, so let me move on, okay? I have just a couple of minutes. So with this, we can now move on to the next page. All right, and I'll point it out and I'll finish up on Tuesday. Uh, no, and this is the wrong page. Uh, let's see. Let me just try and run, run through this and then, aha, so this is the second page. All right, so you, all of you, you already have it. Now, so the little digression, this thing has a name in econometrics. I don't know if you came across this in Echo 4000, but it is called the Walls Decomposition Theorem. 
Okay, so what we just did leads to something called the world's decomposition theorem because, because it tells us that an autoregressive model, if we, use, if we did what we did, if we do what we did at the bottom of page one, it lets us express an autoregressive model in, in terms of the white noise. And that white noise you will see, we are going to use it as a moving average maybe in after the after the semester after the uh, spring break so i'm going to come back to you with this one to this first four lines of page two i just put it here so that you, you have it in your mind i'll remind you again when the time comes all right so this is the end of the digression so if you go back to page one and look at the uh, my definition of variance remember i said variance is expected value of xt minus its mean times xt minus its mean, but the, the mean of xt is we put to zero, Danny, for the reason you gave, okay, or whoever gave me that reason. So now, so look, so the variance here is equal to expected value of xt times xt. Now, everybody, I don't have time. Just look at the previous page, the last line of the previous page. So we are bringing the last line. Instead of xt here, we put the last line, that is the last line. You see that? Everybody see that? Yes? Okay, yeah. Okay, and instead of xt, we put it here. So I'm just writing this equation in terms of the last line of the previous page. Does everybody see this? Yes. Okay. So if you see this from here on is just, we're just expanding. So here I said, so the variance is expected value of X of T. This is X of T, everything here and X of T. Okay, that's from here, okay? So now I, I, I expand this. So I say this is expected value of U, what is UT times UT? It's UT squared, yes? Yes. What is, uh, what is UT times phi one ut minus one is phi one ut minus one times ut, all right? And so on. And then this one, phi one ut minus one times this, I write it there, phi one ut minus one times phi one ut minus one is phi one squared ut minus one squared, yes? So that's, that's this one. And then, and then for the third one, phi one, uh, uh, three ut to the minus three, I put it here. So, but you see, this is, again, I'm running out of time, but if you go home and you look at this and I'll say this again on Tuesday, eh, look, what is the expected value of u to the t and u to the t minus one? That's covariance, is zero. So, so after expanding here, anything with any of the terms with different time periods, t and t minus one, the expected value is zero, okay? Take it from me, I'll explain it more on Tuesday. This is t and t minus two. So when we take expectation, that's covariance is zero. Uh, t minus one and t, this, this cancels out. t minus one squared, that stays. So this first term stays, this term stays. So any term with, for example, t minus one squared, and this, that stays. T minus, t minus two squared, that stays, this one, okay? But every other term with different time periods, they will cancel out, okay? Just, just remember that as you read this at home. So what remains is expected value of ut, ut, this one, ut minus one squared, and all of this, ut minus one squared, phi one three, ut minus two squared. So I collect all the uh, terms that are either t, ut squared, or ut minus one squared, or ut minus two squared. But every term, look, every term with different time periods, all those terms will cancel out. When we take expectation, they will become zero, okay? That, that makes this proof very convenient. So what is left is only terms with t squared, 
ut minus one, ut minus one squared, ut minus two squared. So those are the only ones we worry about. Everything else cancels out. Please give me two more minutes, I'll be finished, okay? Sorry to, to keep you. So this says expected value of ut squared is this. Expected value of all of this is the constant squared, okay? Is the constant squared times expected value of this and this one. Now, what is the expected value of the, uh, what is the, what is the, this is essentially the variance of the white noise, yes? Can somebody remind me what is the variance of a white noise process? Zero. It's, no, no, zero. no, no, it's constant. Constant. Remember, the mean is zero. Right. The mean is zero. The variance of a white noise series is, is homoscedastic, it's constant, right? Yes. So the ver this is the expected value of the, of the, of, of U2 squared, that's the variance. Okay, this is phi one squared times expected value of the uh, white noise lag one period squared is the same thing as the variance. The white noise there, you remember, whether it's T minus one or T minus two or T, the variance of a white noise process is what? It's constant. It doesn't matter how much you lag it left and right. So all these terms, they have, even though this is T minus, this is U T minus two, okay? The variance, so the expected value of ut minus two squared is the variance, even though it's lag t minus two, but we already said that the white noise has constant variance. It doesn't matter the lags, the time period. So this here is the, the variance of the white noise. This here is phi one squared times the variance of the white noise. This thing here is phi one uh, to the power of four, uh, the variance of, so if you walk through, if you walk through this, you will see and you cancel all those terms with different time periods, T minus one and T minus two, everything, you'll be left with this term. And since the, 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 the variance is the same here, is the same here, we simply bring it out of the, per so if you bring this out, one is left. If you bring this out, sigma squared here, phi one squared, if you bring this out here is phi one to the power of four and then so the variance of x1 is this, okay? Is this uh, sigma squared into one plus this, one plus this. So that again, that is, that is sigma squared divided by, I'm sorry, sigma squared into, again, from calculus, okay? The same argument I gave you last time of an infinite series. Guys, please look at this, this term here. What is the cons, what am I multiplying each term with? Here I have sigma one, squared. here I have times six. So one times sigma squared is sigma squared. Sigma squared, I'm sorry, phi one squared times phi one squared is phi one four. So the constant, the constant term here is phi one squared. So that is why I said this is one divided by one minus phi one squared. This is exactly the same thing I explained last class when I was explaining it for the mean, okay? So therefore the variance of this AR1 process is equal to the variance of the white noise divided by one minus phi one squared. That is that, okay? Okay, that is that. And then before we, before we close, let me remind you of, uh, uh, we showed it earlier. Uh, where is this, where is this, where is this, where is this? I, I will review all of this on Tuesday, so don't worry about it, okay? But I just want to show you, okay? Remember I said I was going to prove that this is the variance. That's what we just said. That the variance of this AR1 uh, uh, time series process is equal to the variance of the white noise process divided by one minus phi one squared, okay? Okay guys, thank you for your patience. And uh, it's nice that uh, in class that we argue in class, it's nice. I'm going to stop recording now. The recording has stopped. It is nice that your frustrations show in class but we have to work together to make you less frustrated, okay? All right, so I'll see you next Tuesday, everybody. And before you wake up tomorrow, your homework number two, will, 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 I will post it. Oh. Ah, you got the second vaccine, that's good. Professor, <laughs> um, can, we, can we talk, on, like I said before? Yes, I, but you have to wait. I have, uh, yeah, okay guys, so good night. I'm sorry I kept you for, what, ten, five more minutes? Oh my God, eight more minutes. Sorry about that.